Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Castles of Burgundy 20th Anniversary. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Back in 2011, Castles of Burgundy came out, designed by Stefan Feld, and it was a huge hit. Even today, with all the new big games coming out all the time, it's still listed as the 15th best game ever made, according to Board Game Geek, as the time I shot this video. But just at the late last year, in 2019, a 20th anniversary edition came out. Don't get confused. The original came out in 2011. This is the 20th anniversary of the publisher, Aaliyah. Anyways, they redid the art. Uh, it looks a lot better, and they added you know, uh, nine, I believe nine different expansion modules. So I'm going to, since I've never reviewed this before, I'm going to give you a normal review for Castles of Burgundy, but then I'm going to compare it to the older version. So here we go. In Castles of Burgundy, every player is going to get their own duchy. This is this player board with your duchy here. And you're going to be building up different things. Everyone starts with a castle. You're going to be building out from this castle, out to the sea, out to the monasteries, to buildings and pastures as the game goes on. Now here's the new vibrant board for this version of the game. Now each game essentially is five rounds long. And each round, each player is going to get five turns. Now the main way to score points in this game is by finishing different areas on your board. The dark greener castles, the light greener pastures, here's the blues, the shipping sea areas, uh, buildings, mines, and yellow monasteries. And you can see there's different areas. This is one contiguous area. This is one area. It's a single area, just one spot. This is one big area, for example. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to be uh, trying to build out from this castle. Now on your turn, there's really four possible things you can do, uh, but what you're trying to do really is finish all these up in order to get lots of points. Because if you're able to finish an area, like this is a single area, if you're able to put this colored tile, the building there, you're able to complete this area. And if you're able to do it in the first round, you're gonna get 10 points. But the longer the rounds go, the less and less points you'll get for finishing an area. But you're also gonna get points for how big that area was. That one was only one. So if I finish that in the first round, I'm only gonna get 11 points. 10 for completing it in the first round, and one because it's a size of one. And as the game goes on, now you can build off of anything adjacent. So at the beginning of the game, it was just one of these around the castle. And now it's anything that's surrounding one of these. Maybe you can start working on this pasture. And this one's one, two, three, four, five size big. Whereas if we finish that one, we'd get 15 points plus points for whatever which round we get in. So even if you finish that one the last round, it's getting you more points than this did. This would have only gotten you 11 in the first round for one size. This one's actually going to get you 17, uh, even if you do it in the last round. So different ways to get points there. In addition to that, you're going to get points if you're the first or second person to build there. So we were the first one to build the buildings. You'd get five, six, or seven points if you're playing a two, three, or four player game. So in this case, we're playing a two player game. You'd, the first player doing that would get the five points, and the next player would get two points there for a two player game. Now on your turn, you're going to roll your two dice, and you're going to get to take one action for each of those dice on your turn. So let's go over the four options you have with each of the dice. One of the options is to take one of the tiles with, uh, that corresponds to the die number. Now you'll see tiles out here that you can take around the edge of the board. Now this is a two player game, so these aren't used. In a three player game, this would fill. In a four player game, you'd flip it over so the game scales well. So with this four, one of the things you could do is take a tile. So I could take any one of these fours or any one of these ones by default. So let's say we use this dice and we take the building that we just showed you before because it's next to the four. And you'd add that building to here on your board. You can hold up to three of them. That's one thing you do is take a tile. And when you finish an action, you put your die here so you know you finished it. Now this is a one. Now again, you could take the same action twice. I could go take another tile if I wanted to, assuming I have room. But another thing you could do is place a tile. Now you have to place a tile where this belongs, meaning the color. It has to be adjacent to at least one of the tile. And the number where you're placing it has to match your die. So I couldn't put this here by default because I only have a one. However, everyone starts with a certain amount of workers depending on player order. Each of these allow you to manipulate the die by one, up or down. You can even wrap. A 1 could go to a 6, a 6 could go to the 1. So I could use both of my workers to make that from a 1 to a 3, and now I can place this on the 3 because it's the right color and it's there, and we would trigger this scoring again because it's the only one there. Now each of these buildings do all sorts of different things. This one just gets your 4 points at the end of the game. And then it'll be the next player's turn, but the other two options you have is you can spend a die of any value to gain a worker from the supply and place it here. So you could do what I just showed you. The last action you could do is take a die that has one of these corresponding numbers and sell these goods. Now you'll sell all of them of one type. 
So let's say I actually had two of these types of goods, which are fours, and I used a four die, I could sell both of these. Now, you're going to get uh, one coin, regardless of how many you sell, but then you're gonna get a certain amount of points, two, three, or four, depending on how many players you're playing with. So in this case, I'm gonna sell these, and they're each gonna be worth two points, so I'd get four points and one coin for selling these here, and I open up a spot for a new one. Well, how do you get those good tiles? Good question. The star player will always roll an additional die, a white one, and that is gonna take the next good on the turn tracker and put it where it belongs, like this, something like this. And this is helping you track the five different turns in each round. And how you get these is when you actually place one of these ships. When you place that ship, you'll actually be able to take all the goods from any one of these spots and add it to your board. And then they get to move up on the bridge. This is gonna be turn order for the future turns. Now, in addition to those four possible actions, on your turn, you can spend two coins to get any one of these specific dark tiles that come out at the beginning of each round. You'll need these as the tiles get scarcer and scarcer, getting them the normal means. Now, the different tiles do different things. We talked about the shipping. The mines get you one coin for every mine you have at the end of each round. The pastures are going to get you points for all the same type of livestock you have in your pasture. Like this one would get you four points. If you place this one, you're going to get four plus two for any of the ones that are in that same area, regardless of where it's at. But there's all sorts of different ones out there too. Like this one would just get you two points because you only have two of these type in this pasture, for example. When you place a castle, you get to take another turn with a virtual die of any amount, which is really cool. Now the game comes with a nice hard uh, cardboard player aid that tells you the four different actions you can take. Again, you can take two coins to get one of the black tiles, gives you the scoring. But on the other side, it tells you what all the different actions do that we just talked about. Here's all the buildings. These buildings do all sorts of different things like getting you coins, getting you workers, getting you points, allowing you to take tiles or place tiles. And the yellow ones, essentially they do all sorts of different things. Some of them will give you points depending on how many buildings you have. Some of the other ones will give you some special actions. That's how you play the game. After each player has taken five turns, you'll start a new round. You'll, re you'll discard all the tiles. You'll put new ones. You'll start a new round here. And after the end of the uh, five rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, the game has many expansions. One is having more hex tiles. Like this yellow one allows you to put your turn order marker always on top. If it's stacked, it gives you a better turn order. You can always spend a coin to get two workers. This building allows you to be any other worker. You take that ability. And this one is sort of a wild. They're the geese. They essentially are two points, but they act as if they're something else. So they can trigger multiple times with any other uh, you know, livestock you have in that pasture. If you place a white castle, which is a new tile, you can essentially use the white die immediately as taking a normal action. Each round, one in is put next to this. You can buy it for two coins, just like you could buy one of the black ones. You place this anywhere. It's a wild, but it doesn't trigger any abilities, but it helps you finish sections faster. These trade routes are cool. You'll get a certain amount of these depending on the amount of players, and you go from left to right. When you sell goods, if you, instead of putting them where you used to put them, you put them here, and if the color matches, you get to enact the ability, like getting four workers, or immediately uh, uh, putting one of these types of tiles in, uh, you know, in your storage space, uh, or you know, all sorts of different abilities. So it gives you one more thing to think about as to when you're selling certain good types. There's also shields. You put a certain number of these per depot, depending on the amount of players. Then when, if you roll doubles, you can take the doubles that you rolled, like let's say double one, you could take this and put it on one of the castles in your duchy. And at the end of each round, you have to pay a coin before you get coins for mines to keep it here. If it's here at the end of the game, you'll get 12 points, but they all give you an ability like this says, anytime anyone gets a worker, you get one too. And there's 17 powerful shields with all different types of abilities. Now the boards, there's different ways you can play. There's a team game where you can play with another player and you're both working on this. You each have your own storage unit and a shared storage unit and you're combining basically the points of this team at the end of the game. There's also a solo game where you're trying to finish all of these. The rules are a little bit different and you use the ships to get to all the different areas, but you're trying to fill all, all the tiles in order to win. Now from the main boards, there's also number two boards that everyone can use. It just gives you a slightly different look from the original, but everyone has to play on the same board or you could play a variant where people draft boards because there's all sorts of different boards here as well to play with. There's also 11s, and this has three different towers. And you're either trying to connect any two of these together or all three. Now, when you connect any two of them, you're getting bonus points depending on which round it is. And if you connect all three, the first player will get five, six, or seven. If you're playing two, three, or four player games, the second player to do that will get two, three, and four. Same points as the color bonuses. Now let's take a look at the old version versus the new. Here's the old board, and notice that the new one is a lot bigger. I have this lined up to the corners. It's definitely a decent amount larger. 
And there's another look at the size difference between them, but also look at the difference. I mean, the old art is just drab and muted colors and you go boom and you go, wow, that just looks a whole lot nicer, at least in my opinion. Now the player boards are actually slightly larger in the old version, but again, look at the colors, nice and vibrant, and then, ugh, ugly. I mean, it's just, it just does not look nice. Now they did put all of the actions on the board itself there, where the new version, again, it had a nice player aid that was separate like that, that was nice hard cardboard. Uh, I like the new version a lot nicer. Here we have the old and the new version for both the workers and the money. Again, I like the new one better. It looks kind of nicer. And the money is kind of cut, so it looks kind of sort of uneven on purpose, which I thought was really cool in this new version. And then the shipping goods. Uh, top one is the older version. All the same boring artwork. Here we have all different goods. Much better in the new version. And here's the difference of the tiles. Old version on the top, new one on the bottom. Now in my final thoughts, I talked about the tiles being bigger. What I was talking about was the thickness of this, because these are pretty thin like that, where these are definitely a lot thicker. Uh, and I, you know, there's not as big a difference here as some of the other things. Uh, I still like most of these better. Maybe this one's a little bit easier to see from far away. Uh, and here the icons are actually a little bit bigger, which was one of my complaints in the new version. They made it look so nice that the that they're a little bit smaller. So I actually like the green and the yellows better on the old ones, uh, but all the other ones I like the new version better. All right, since I haven't reviewed this before, I'm gonna tell you my normal review, then I'll go over the expansions, then I'll go over the comparison with the other one. Now, Castles of Burgundy itself, I find to be an extremely engaging dice action selection game, where, you know, you're rolling those dice, uh, but you're able to manipulate those dice with the workers to get what you need. And you're trying to figure out each turn, okay, I've rolled these two dice, what am I gonna do? Do I need to get tiles? Do I need to place tiles? Do I need to get more workers? Do I need to sell some goods? You're really selecting four different possible actions, but with that and the two dice you've rolled and seeing what's out there and seeing which turn it is, because as the turns go on, the tiles get scarcer and scarcer as to which ones you're gonna be getting for that round or possibly being able to, to get. And it, 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 it's just a really engaging game. It, it, the mechanisms aren't overbearing. They're pretty simple. Roll two dice, pick one of four actions for each of the two dice and do your thing. But there's a lot of decision making in this space. Um, manipulating the dice is a big thing because, you know, Euro gamers typically don't like a lot of luck in their games, but this has luck. But if you want to mitigate it, you can get workers. You can spend turns to get workers. A certain tiles will get you more workers, different buildings and such. And I love the fact that you're trying to decide when to use that currency, when you really need to manipulate that. Um, or, you know, it's like, ooh, can I, I can manipulate this to get that one last castle tile out there? Or do I want to save that worker for later and use this die for whatever I can normally get with it right now? Those are some of the tough decisions you make in this game. I like that you're racing to complete different sections on your board. And the earlier rounds give you more points. So you're trying to finish them. So maybe you try to finish some of the smaller ones early and get the big, you know, 10 points at the first round or whatever. But the bigger places are going to get you more and more points you know, the bigger they are. So again, it's another sort of push and pull. What are you gonna go after, depending on what, what section of the game it is? And you're sort of racing to be able to do that, not necessarily against other players, but against yourself, trying to, 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 to get things done as fast as possible. And again, as those rounds go on and as those tiles start to, to, to get sucked up by other players, it really produces a great amount of tension in the game where you're like, oh, I really need this tile, what do I do? And then someone else takes it and you get all upset and it's just the way it works. Or do you you know, spend money to get the ones from the middle that also are somewhat random, but you know what they're there at the beginning of the, of, of the round. Uh, so the, the tension in this game is fantastic. The game scales well with the boards on both sides, two, three, and four players. Uh, and there's, it's a, it's a Stefan Feld game, right? So it's point salad, different ways to score pastures and the mon monasteries and the different goods, lots of different ways to score. Of course, the main ways in this one is trying to finish your areas, but there's other sub, you know, subsequent strategies to go along as well. And each of those tiles doing different things has you go down different strategies. I like, uh, the different board setups where you can play with a normal board, you can play with a number two board, you can play with the 11 boards, which allows you to try to uh, connect the different uh, towers. That's one of the expansions. Um, in this one, versus the older one, the, the, the new colors here are much more vibrant. As you can see, you know, you put it next to it, the other ones are just so drab and so muted. Uh, this is nice and vibrant, gives it a nice, nice new look. The board's bigger, the tiles are bigger. Um, now onto the expansions, you know, from what I read, like eight of the nine, or most of these were, were somewhat available at some points with different promos and such. 
uh, and some of them were still hard to get so it's nice that they put them all together and then one new expansion uh, uh, as the expansion goes, I've read some people don't like to put them all together. I didn't have a problem with that. Um, I could see that the one that people have the most problem with is sort of the ends, that sort of wild good that only one comes out per round. But you could buy that and it could be anything. It helps you complete some of the bigger sections. And I've heard people are like, well, it takes some of the tension out of the game. I didn't find it that bad because there's only one per round. And if, if they don't get taken, you know, they, get, they keep getting stacked more and more. But I like that one. I really liked all the expansions. More monastery tiles, cool. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the new board sides, uh, the, the team game, I don't really care that much. The solo game, I'm glad it has that there. Uh, the trade routes, I really like that, where you're trying to, you know, sell goods in the specific order. That was a cool little puzzle to add. The, um, the shields was awesome. Like putting those shields in those goods and being able to get them with doubles, but then having to pay for it every round, but it gives you a lot of points and a cool ability. I really like the shields. Uh, overall, I, I oh, in, in the extra pastures, the little wild duck things, that's cool too. So I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to just play this with all the expansions after you've, after you've played the game a couple of times. Uh, and again, the solo mode just goes, works well too, which I believe was not in the original. On the negative side of things, the even with it being a little bigger and nicer art, the icons are still really small on the yellow monastery tiles. It's really hard to see them. You kind of almost have to pick the tile up and look at it and then look at the book. After you play the game a few times, you'll know what they do, but you still, the, the icons are still kind of small. And granted, if they made them bigger, then the tiles wouldn't have been as nice looking, but in this case, I might have went for function over art because the art isn't that great anyway. Sure, it's better than the original, but to today's standards, it's still not up to speed with everything else and other you know other games these days this game is all about the dice you're rolling two dice you're manipulating the dice and the dice that are in there are just the plain old small little generic dice you could buy at the dollar store i just really wish that they would have made this special edition have much you know bigger or chunkier dice make them really feel nice in your hands of course it would have increased the cost but man i really wish they would have done that because i mean this game is all about the dice uh, and also the rule book itself was not great. It's hard to learn the game from just the rule book. <clears throat> Even the setup uh, procedures, they tell you to get all these things, but they don't give you, they're not really showing you what these components really look like. So rule book, thumbs down on that as well. But overall, Castles of Burgundy is an amazing game. I'm not a humongous Steppenfeld game, but this is definitely one of my favorites of his. I'm still like teetering between this and Carpe Diem. Uh, but this is definitely an, a, a fantastic game. It doesn't overstay its welcome, and this is definitely a better version. Now, this version is definitely more expensive than the original, but after looking at this, you should be able to tell for yourself if it's worth it to you. I think it is. Uh, and for all these reasons, this is getting a saxophone serenade. I'm finally going to have a copy of Castles of Burgundy in my gaming library, so let's hit it with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear, it's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.